University West is now hosting an international conference, VLAIR, uh, for a couple of days. Uh, uh, it's focused on work integrated learning. Uh, that is also the profile of our university. So today I have with me one of the keynote speakers. Most welcome. Thank you for Mario having me. Mario Romero. Thank you. Uh, nice having you here. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to ask you a little about your speech uh, tomorrow. What are the main focuses that you are going to address in your speech? If you can give a short version for them who can't be here. Yes, of course. I'm going to be talking about expo-based learning. Yeah. And it is based on the idea that students take their work that they do in the classroom and they expose it to the world. Mm. So they are held... Um, their accountability is held at a different level. Perhaps um, most students are, are they're relatively used to presenting to their peers, fellow students and teachers. Now they need to present to three-year-olds and veterans of the graphics industry. So they need to modulate how they present their work. Mm -hmm. It is my experience, and I'm gathering more evidence of this, that um, by having to expose their work to open audiences, and we're talking several thousand people, and we can get into the details mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. But we basically set up opportunities for them to present their work publicly. So their work needs to be more stable, more robust, and they need to be able to present it in different ways, yeah. from having a three-year-old understand it to uh, discussing the details of the inner workings with, like I said, a veteran of the industry or a reporter as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the premise. So it's about premise. more or less targeting to the right audience, or yes. it's about a bit of communication area also. A lot of it is yeah. communication, yeah. because um, when you explain what you're doing to mm. somebody who's in the field, you can bypass a lot of assumptions. And maybe some of those assumptions, or some of those things you think you know well, you don't know them as well as you think you do. When you have to explain these things to people that are not in the field, you have to um, forget about the assumptions and go back to the basics and explain well, what is a pixel, really, for example? Mm -hmm. and, and then you challenge people's, um, basically, conceptions, their inner mm -hmm. models of what they know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very useful mm -hmm. for the students. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you do this? What's the model like? Can yes. you, is it possible uh, to explain? I can explain it in a few... In, uh, a, few, uh, yeah, uh, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah? Um, so what we do is we have um, a very tight schedule, and we present in public venues. And those dates can't be moved. So we don't negotiate that part. There's a deadline and we have to stick to it. What we negotiate is what we deliver. So we set up a priority list of features that the projects will have, and these are group projects. And as the date is coming closer, we remove features from the list. So we focus on the highest priority um, features. They have an early presentation that is only four weeks after they started working. And it's Forska Fredag which is uh, Researcher's Night. Mm. It happens on the last Friday of every September. Mm. It's a Europe-wide event. And we present to high school students and teachers. But what we present is very um, beta stage. It's, it's sort of a prototype that is half working. And we recruit these high school students to provide feedback to make the projects better. So they feel integrated into the experience, the high school students. They also get to see what uh, KTH is doing. Uh, the Royal Institute of Technology and and what the students are doing. I think it's also very important for them to see the creators. You know, this isn't something that is done in some faraway land. This is created mm -hmm. by people just like them, and I think that's very important. And for my students, it's very important to receive that early feedback because they again have a lot of assumptions about what people understand and and how the technology works. And when they when they present, they've only been developing for four weeks when they present this early development to this open audience, and it's about three to 5,000 people mm -hmm. in one day, mm -hmm. they get a deeper and truer understanding of what is going on with their own projects. Mm -hmm. Then they have four more weeks to develop, and they present um, in what here in Sweden is called um, the fall break, Hostlov. Mm -hmm. So it's the first um, and second of November. And we present at Tekniska Muset, so that's the Technical Museum of Stockholm, Science and Technology Museum of Stockholm. Uh, again, to an open audience. And because it is a, a holiday, it's a few thousand people. It's, three, again, three to 5,000 people over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of very young people, a lot of, uh, of their challenge. parents. Mm -hmm. And it's a big challenge, mm -hmm. and their projects need to be um, 
the, our partners at the museum, they call it museum strength. So the projects need to be really working at a very intense um, pace. And again, the students are challenged to present their work. During the entire period, I observe, I and the other course um, managers, we observe what is going on with this. And also, we challenge the students to collect evidence of their success and failures as well. So what is working and what is not working. And they collect evidence through uh, taking a lot of notes um, and sort of observing what people are doing and how they're doing it. And also for those um, who, who participate and are willing to have a short interview, they run uh, short interviews with them and short surveys as mm -hmm. well. So we have a number of methods for the students to collect evidence of their success. Mm -hmm. And then they write a report about it and create a web page. So that is, um, that is part of the process. Mm -hmm. At the end, they also have, we also have an open house at uh, my studio, so the Visual Session Studio in, uh, at Kotoho. We have uh, an open house where we invite everybody to see the projects once again. But that's, um, that's in summary how the process works. Mm -hmm. And we've been changing it. Um, different events, some events get cancelled or moved to a different time of the year when it doesn't work for us. So we need to update the model. But the, the basics of the model is we have a date that is non-movable, that is public, attended by thousands mm. of people, and their projects need to be working by then. Mm. This um, is reality. Ha exactly, this is, exactly. This so it's happening. an advanced mm. course as well. Um, these are students that are about to graduate, so we also want to expose them mm. to how things happen in reality yeah. uh, when in it comes to life. development mm. and release. Mm. Mm. Um, the date is there and you have to mm. do, um, you have to deliver the highest priority mm. features. Mm. and, and um, so how can you, how do you see the progress then from, I mean, stage A to the final stage? Correct. At the students. So the students. Um, Is I've, it really, I, really I also, improving? Yes, I also. Um, how should I say this? I, I run my own evaluation of the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I take surveys and I also interview students as well, and I have a. I have published a couple of papers about this, and, and in the papers I have evidence of students realizing at some point, um, either between Forska Fredag and Technische um, Kommissar, somewhere in there there's this realization that presenting to open audiences raises the level of the project itself, raises the level of the learning, and their accountability, and their ability to explain it. Mm -hmm. And um, to hear it in their own words, I, I can quote one of the students. The student says this, when I present to fellow students and teachers, um, I know things are working. The computers are working, and I know that when I say something, they're going to understand it because it's their field. When I'm over there with sort of at the museum or at Forska Fredag, I don't know if things are going to work. I, am, I have to make sure everything is working from the power to the network, um, and then I have to explain everything. I have to be ready to explain everything, and that raises the stakes, and that improves. Um, it has improved my education comparing to other methods. The method is based on project-based learning, PBL. In project-based learning, there is um, more emphasis on the learning process and fewer emphasis um, on the deliverable. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do with EBL, Expo-based learning, is to, um, while we retain emphasis on the learning, we also shift part of the emphasis to the deliverable because it's public. and. It will become also their, their work portfolio. Mm. So I asked them to build professional websites that document the process. And um, these websites are permanent. So when they are looking for a job, mm. when they are having an interview, and the interviewer asks, well, what have you done? Mm. What are your skills? Can you show me some projects? Mm. I really, really challenge the students to have excellent portfolios to present mm. at that moment and be clear Smart. about, mm. be clear about what is their contribution to this project? What is their skills? Mm. We are hiring more on skills mm. Um, mm. as a society mm. than on diplomas mm. or credentials. Mm. So to demonstrate um, what you can do, I think that is very important mm. for the students. Mm. So we keep a permanent record of that as well. So it's many kinds of value added to this. Exactly, yeah. and, and yeah. It's, it goes with the theme of the conference, which is sort of education that is close mm. to industry, yeah. education that is close to the public. Yeah. Mm. So how come you have any interest in this then? How did it start? Well, I'm, I'm interested in education yeah. in general. Um, I do believe education is um, 
is a key element to um, development and sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, so as an educator, I take, I take the role as an educator, um, I guess I take it as, um, as real as possible, if you will. Mm -hmm. So when I do examinations, the examinations are in front of a public, very large public audience. And they are, um, they're not, my evaluations are not paper-based, sort of in a closed room. They are um, the way that we handle ourselves most of the time in society. They are your presence, your ability to communicate, your ability to think on the spot, to understand Adjust. what mm. the question is, and modify your answer so that it meets the person who's asking the question. Um, have presence, have, you know, show your mm. skills in a real setting. Mm. So that's what I thought would work. Um, it's an experiment, it's an ongoing experiment. So we bypass paper and pencil tests to have sort of live presentations and large ones. And let's see what happens. Oh, it's so interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. Really exciting. And we have Thank also you. been a part of Forska Freda here at yes. the West. I, I, can, so, uh, I can imagine. I, I, can, saw your, I, <laughs> I saw your... I have many new thoughts I saw now. your smile. Yeah, I saw your yeah, smile, exactly. Yeah. It's a good event. It's a wonderful yeah, event. And yeah. it's... Um, I mean, this is originally organized by the European Research yeah, Council. Yeah. And they have funded and promoted the event across Europe. Yeah. And of course, in Sweden, it has become the entire Friday. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. it's also Saturday. Yeah. Uh, one day was not enough, mm -hmm. so um, so mm -hmm. we we are good part way of that. Of using it. We are part mm -hmm. of that, and and um, you say a good way of using it. Yes, because we recruit the the high school students to be our beta yeah. testers yeah. and to be our critiques and to be um, a lot of the projects that my students are, are building. And it's part of the theme of the conference. They are virtual reality and augmented reality, mm -hmm. computer graphics, interactive graphics, and many of them are games. Mm -hmm. And it's the right mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. Mm. These are spot on. <laughs> well, they're almost professional mm. gamers. Mm. I mean, if they win money, they are professional game, gamers. But they are very um, invested in the theme in general. Mm. Um, so it's the perfect audience to show this type of project. Mm. It may be a little more difficult when it comes to other subjects. So if you're doing chemistry or, or, mm. or mm. biology, mm. but we do have mm. chemistry and biology at Forska Fredag. Mm. And once again, they are challenged to present their work in a way that is appealing to the audience. So for us, it's not as challenging because the work is already mm, appealing. Mm, so, mm, so, so that part is, yeah. we get for free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I think we have a bit of good glimpse now what you're going to talk about. So thank you. I think I end it here. And thank, thank you, you so for much. coming. All right, thank it you. is my pleasure. Yeah. Bye. Bye.